Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Box of Crayons palette. As you gorgeous people know, this is about the product, not the people behind it. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away, because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Not gonna lie, I've been so fucking uninspired by makeup palettes lately, it just seems like everything is oranges and reds and browns, and so when I saw this colorful bitch pop up, oh my god, I was in fucking heaven. It kinda seems like as we're heading out of winter, brands are starting to come out with more colorful palettes, but this one in particular, I'm just really excited about. I've completely avoided watching any reviews of this, and it has been so difficult avoiding reviews because this is blowing up all over the internet, which honestly, good for them. I love to see brands blow up in a positive way that aren't necessarily in Sephora or Ulta. Being a brand myself, it just, it makes me feel good to see others do well. I'm on their website right now. The brand is called The Crayon Case, and over the last two months, they have gotten so much press. They've been in Teen Vogue, Pop Sugar, Essence, all these amazing articles, so that is very fucking impressive. Like I said before, this is about the brand and not the people behind it, but I'm actually on their about page, and the woman behind this actually sounds kind of fucking amazing. She raises awareness about homelessness, established anti-bullying campaigns, like this lady gets shit done, and I think that's why I'm picking up such good vibes around this. Anyways, enough of that hippie shit, let's talk about the palette. It was $30, and I don't remember how much shipping was, let me look in the box. Which, by the way, this is what it came in, a very, very nice presentation, it had lots of bubble wrap, and it looks like I paid $8.99 for shipping. So total with taxes was $42.11, which honestly still isn't even that bad. I mean, look at the size of this bitch. It's mammoth. Their website says these shadows are named after school crayons with bold and vibrant colors that are extremely pigmented and long-lasting. The box of crayon palette colors were handpicked by the Crayon Case CEO. This palette is perfect for playing in multiple colors. The ingredients are pretty basic for an eyeshadow palette. The first ingredient is talc, so if you're concerned about that, then obviously stay away from it. I don't see anything about this palette being vegan, which honestly is not a big issue for me, but it is definitely cruelty-free. But let's bust into this bitch. This is what the packaging looks like. It's very very, very cute, very reminiscent of my middle school days, and ooh, it comes in nice bubble wrap. And I do want to say that I noticed Nikki tutorials arrived damaged, and they do have a return policy that if you get a damaged product, you can send it back to them. Ooh, very nice and sensual. This has a really nice weight to it, and it doesn't feel cheap at all. I mean, it is cardboard, but it kind of feels luxe at the same time. And I think it has a magnet. Ooh, yes. All right, let's slide this plastic out and open this bitch up. <gasps> Oh, fuck yes, it's everything I've ever wanted. So pretty. This one actually reminds me of my glow-in-the-dark highlighter. We might have to play with that sometime. Oh, and it has a really big-ass mirror in it. I fucking love that. Anyways, we have a really good-ass array of colors. I mean, I feel like all of them won't blend together, but you could create so many beautiful looks with this. One thing I am disappointed in, though, which really doesn't even matter, is the names. Like, I thought they were gonna be something really special. Like how there's those weird crane names like Banana Mania, but instead this is blue, green, red, yellow, black, brown, just very basic. I guess for having a not-so-basic palette, it would have been more fun to have the not-so-basic names, but really, it's not a big deal. Who the fuck cares about the names? These just look so damn beautiful, especially that blue. Like, it is calling my name. Oh my god, and that purple. So, I am really fucking excited to swatch and do a look with this bitch. You guys know the song. Are you ready? It's swatching time. Okay, I just want to feel this on my finger. Oh, it's actually kind of gritty. That might be because it has a little bit of glitter in it, but it's not smooth feeling. Oh, the green is really nice feeling though. But they're not creamy and buttery feeling at all, which really isn't a big issue to me. I just care about how they perform. First up, we have blue, green, red, and yellow, and the coloring is beautiful, but honestly, they are a bit on the chalky side. Like I did have to swatch these a few times just to get this to show up, which really isn't that big of a deal. They might perform amazingly on a brush, but again, they are a a little bit on the powdery chalky side. Next up, we have black, brown, orange, and violet, and the shimmers were very, very pretty, but they're all just okay. The shimmers are actually kind of on the chunky side. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but they're more like a glitter than a shimmer. And I do want to say that I did also swatch these on my arm because I thought maybe the ridges on my hand were making these a little bit inconsistent, but they swatched pretty much the exact same, so this is really how they look, and no, it's not terrible, but it's not the best thing in the world either. Up next is baby blue, purple, pink, pink and tan and I really don't know how I feel about these because there is pigment to them, but there's not a lot of pigment. And it's not like the coloring is faded or powdery, it's just that when you swipe these on your skin, not a lot shows up. These next colors are magenta, white, silver, and gold, and once again, I did have to swipe over these a couple times for them to not be patchy, but otherwise, the coloring is beautiful, especially that magenta one, I think it's gorgeous. And finally, we have deep plum and lime green, and lime green is actually really fucking pretty, but deep plum, for 
some reason is splotchy as hell. And I know it's especially splotchy along the ridges of my hand, but for once I'm actually really grateful for those ridges because it does in some sense kind of mimic our eye. Like, I don't know about your eyes, but my eyes are not completely flat. Like, I have a crease, and if this is how the purple is gonna look like on the crease, then that's kind of good to know. I know those swatches were a little bit eh, but honestly, I don't have an opinion about this yet because oftentimes swatches aren't a fair or honest representation of a palette, so I'm going into this look with a completely open mind. So let's get started. For foundation, I'm just gonna use my Pure Cameo Contour Stick. For concealer, let's try some of this Makeup Revolution in the shade C3. Oh, hi, Ron. You wanna say hello to the lovely people? Oh my God, don't fall. Hi, Ron. Oh my God, you look scared as fuck. Oh, I love you. Say hello. Say hello. Hi, bitches, I love you all. Oh, yes, you're such a ladies' man, aren't you? Oh, I'm single. Mm. Oops, sorry, you got my face on ya. Oh, you just want some lovin's. He's so cute. And let's go ahead and set underneath our eyes with some translucent setting powder. Okay, Ron is back on my lap and he keeps licking his lips, so if you hear that noise, I swear to you I'm not pulling a Bill Clinton and getting a blowjob under my desk. Oh, Ron, your breath nasty. What is it, baby? Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. Oh. Oh my fucking god. He just had diarrhea all over my shag rug. Oh, poor Ron here. I thought you were just needing attention. Oh, do you gotta go potty? Well, not anymore. Okay. Okay, so that was shitty. My poor little baby. Anyways, I'm sorry for the noise. I have to have my fan going on over there and the windows are all open. My blinds are open. So today is just a day. Anyways, let's continue with this look. I'm just gonna place a bit more translucent powder right under here because I don't know the fallout sitch with this. And this way I won't mess up my toasted foundation look. I am gonna give my entire eye a prime with NYX's eye primer and then set that with some translucent powder. So I'm not exactly certain what look we're gonna do because I haven't even used this yet. So let's start with a basic transition shade and dip into tan on a fluffy brush. And that does seem to pick up pretty well. There's not a ton of fallout on the pan, which really isn't a big issue for me. It's more if the fallout comes off on my face. And really, this is kind of the same shade as the primer that I laid down, so I really don't see much, but it seems to be okay so far. Let's give this brush a clean. And let's dip into pink, which, ooh, there's a little bit of fallout with that, but really not a big deal. I'm just gonna lightly blend this out in little tiny circular motions all along the crease. Holy shit, this is actually performing really good and blending out amazingly. Like, this is what I'm talking about where the swatches don't always do the palette justice. But I will say it does take a little bit of effort and a lot of product to build up. Like this is probably my fifth time dipping into this pink. Next on a smaller fluffy brush, I'm gonna dip into purple. And with that color, I'm gonna start on the lower half of the eye and kind of dab it on the eyelid about halfway in. And we'll very gently blend that into the lower part of the crease. I don't wanna go too high and cover up that pink. And it does look like there is a little bit of fallout with this palette, so I'm really glad I put that powder down because otherwise this would be all over my face. And as I'm laying this purple down, it's actually turning a little bit splotchy. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's kind of difficult to blend out. It's not super duper bad, but I'm just letting you know that it does take a little bit of work. I know it's looking a little bit messy right now, but bear with me. We will make this work. I'm also going to dip into deep plum, and we're going to take that even lower on the outer corner and kind of wing it out. And I'm really only using the shade because when we swatched it, it was splotchy, and I do want to see how it performs on the eye. And it is a little bit splotchy on the eye. I guess I'm just going to blend that out a bit. Oh, Oh my goodness, I could fucking cry right now. I did this entire tutorial and my camera was not recording. Here I am halfway into putting my eyeliner on and I look over into my monitor and it's not recording. I am just so bummed and now my fucking eyes are watering. <gasps> Oh no, because my eyes were watering my fu- Oh shit. This is just not a good makeup day. Oh my God. Oh fucking hell. You know what? We're just gonna start the fuck over. And we are back. We have a clean face. I'm gonna do the same look, but this is probably gonna be a simplified sped up version because honestly, something is making my eyes burn. I have no idea what it is. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with the transition color again, which is tan. Oh, I don't know what the fuck is making my eyes burn, but do you see how glass? Glassy they are. Oh, annoying as fuck. Is that a fucking kid screaming out there? My God, control your spawn. And now with some shape tape, I'm gonna cut the crease to add those other colors. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what the fuck it is, but my eyes just keep watering like crazy. On the outer third, I'm gonna start with a bit of red and I'm just patting that over the concealer. Oh my God, I'm going to kill my camera. I just realized it stopped recording right after I did the red. Fortunately, all I did was mix the red and the yellow to create the orange and then I put the yellow on the inner corner. Damn. Anyways, let's start on the lower lash. There is quite a bit of fallout, so you definitely want to use translucent powder with this or do your foundation last. On the lower lash, 
let's start by smoking out some pink. And then from the outer corner to about halfway in, a little bit of purple. Then right up tight to the lash line, some deep plum. Oh, fucking eyes stop watering. To highlight the inner corners, let's use some of this shimmery white. And just place that bitch right there. Ooh, yes, daddy. Oh, fucking hell. That is pretty. And because we really didn't get a chance to use the lime green, I'm taking some on that same brush and I'm placing that right over that white. Oh my god, I fucking love that color. And a little bit of purple liner. Oh my fucking god, this liner did it again. Okay, I love Kat Von D, but this liner can go suck my ass. Second damn time of doing this. <gasps> Fuck! This day is... Shit. Don't know what the fuck I did to deserve this, but this is happening. <sighs> eh. Oh my god, it wiped all the pink off. And here we are with the final look, six fucking hours later. This review took way longer than it should have. But by no means was it the fault of this palette because I fucking love the shit out of this thing. Like, I cannot wait to use this again and again. You do kind of have to be patient with it and work it around, but for the most part, I really don't have any complaints. The shadows build up really nicely. There is a little bit of fallout, and that deep plum color does have a little bit of patchiness. But overall, I would definitely recommend this palette to anyone who wants a little pop of color in their life. I don't know what's making my eyes water, but ever since I've been putting it on, they have started watering. I don't know if it's that, so I really can't blame it. But if you're like me and you have sensitive eyes, you might want to start on the lighter side and kind of feel it out and then go from there. And we are back for just a second. I just took my makeup off and oh my god, my eyes hurt so fucking badly. It's just everywhere around here and they feel like swollen Oh, this is like deja fucking vu. I don't know that these shadows were what caused the irritation, but I will say that pretty much the entire time I was applying them, my eyes were watering and burning. I have super fucking sensitive eyes, and again, I really don't know that it was these eyeshadows that's doing this, but I will say what I said before, which is if you have sensitive eyes, start small, and if it starts affecting you, then stay away from it. I'm absolutely 100% gonna give these shadows another try. I think they're stunning, and so if I'm affected by them, I'll definitely let you know, but other than that, I just wanted to let you know what the sitch was because this hurts. But there you go. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.